Hey, pen people. Welcome back to Down the Breather Hole. My name is Brian, and today we're going to do something really different. So my last video, where I talked about eyedroppering the pilot Kakuno, um, kind of took a lot out of me. That was a <laughs> that was a big, messy project that took a long time. So I may be just this much burnt out of making videos. So I'm going to give myself just a little bit of a break because, you know, even though I try to keep my videos fairly laid back and stuff. There is still some preparation, some research and post-production and all that kind of stuff that goes into it. So it's a lot of work. So today I'm not really giving myself the day off, but um, I'm going to do something just a little bit different. Usually I try to be this credible source that can give you the right information about fountain pens and inks and papers and all that kind of stuff. And I have to know the specs and um, have to have an opinion on different products and things like that. But today we're going to talk about something that I do not have an opinion on because I've never used it before. I have no idea what I'm about to do. Um, so we're going to talk about something and I don't know what I'm really talking about. So what I'm talking about <laughs> is this little feather pen kit. So my dad went to a big scouting event uh, a number of years ago with some of my brothers um, who were scouts at the time. And they went to a lot of US history sites and different things. So my dad picked this up in Colonial Williamsburg. And um, so it's got some like parchment paper kind of stuff, a feather that has been trimmed into a kind of a nib shape. It has a little glass bottle with some a little baggie of black powdery stuff that I'm assuming you just mix in water and it becomes your ink. So what I want to do is I want to show this to you. We're going to try it out together for the first time. I've never used a feather quill pen before, so this will be fun. Um, my dad also, um, at the same time, brought me back this. It's a pad of like little memo paper and it is made out of elephant poop. Elephants eat grass and they don't digest it very well and it comes out all fibery and stuff so i guess you can clean it off and make paper out of it so who knew but we'll, we'll try we'll do a little writing test with this later so what we're going to do is we're going to get this out we're going to take a look at it and we'll try it out on a couple of different papers and i'll eventually do kind of my typical writing sample if <laughs> if this uh, little feather pen passes the test and is actually usable we'll see so I'm actually going to get this out before I flip the camera around. Let's see. Oh, it's very loud. Okay, so there's that. Here is our pen. I've moved around the country and this thing has just been in a box the whole time and I'm really surprised that it's still intact. You got this little nib shape on there and so I'm really glad it didn't get totally crushed somewhere along the way. I actually waited so long to get this out because I didn't want to like mess up this cool paper but now that I'm seeing it I, I think my the paper that I normally use is probably cooler than this. <laughs> okay now let's look at the ink and the bottle it's supposed to go in. So here's the bottle. It's a nice little glass bottle with a cork on top. Wow, I think that ink was leaking because it's getting all over me already. But here's our ink. Mixing directions. Mix entire contents with two or three ounces of hot water and stir thoroughly. Huh, didn't realize it had to be hot. I have water, but it's not hot, so... Um, I'll be right back. Okay, I just stuck this glass of water in the microwave for a minute and it came out boiling. I don't know how hot hot is supposed to be. Hot is so vague. But um, we have very hot water here, so hopefully that's not the wrong thing to do. Got my ink syringe here to help me out. In fact, I think now's probably a good time to flip the camera around, so let's go ahead and do that. Okie dokie, here we go. We're gonna start with this ink. We'll see how it works. Um, I have no idea what to expect. Um, after that, I have a couple of other fountain pen inks that kind of represent a range of different kind of behaving fountain pen inks. So I'm going to wash the, the pen off and try those as well. So but we'll start with this. And I think what I'll do 
It's just, oh, that cork is tight. Okay, I guess that's how it's supposed to be. I think I'll dump this in first. Okay, so I'm gonna get some hot water here and hope it doesn't melt my syringe. Okay, just pop that in there. Also, I have no idea how to gauge two or three ounces. I guess I've got a three ounce bottle of Noodler's ink here, which is much larger than this little ink bottle, so I don't know if I'm going to get the proportions just right, but we'll see. Okay, I don't dare put any more in there. Uh, in fact, I don't even know if I can get the cork on. I wasn't thinking about that. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it works. Okay, does it say to shake? It says to stir thoroughly. Do you think shaking will do the trick? Probably. All right, let's see. Don't leak, don't leak. Oh, you're leaking. Don't do that. Come on, you're a cork. You're supposed to stop leaking. Should have grabbed my apron. Dog on it. Oh, well, that's why I have this cloth here. I'm actually collecting ink on it. <laughs> this is actually a little bit of a, a notebook pouch I've made for my, my A4 size notebooks. So when I travel with them and stuff, they don't get so beat up. Okay, well that is shaken, but not stirred. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Oh, that stuff. It's kind of stinky. Smell, it smells like ink, actually. It smells like paint or ink. I don't know. Okay, stir, stir, stir. Okay. Well, that's kind of fun. <laughs> How about we start with the poop paper? Let's see. Here's a clean piece. So, if it works well, I do have a quote I'm planning on writing, but if it doesn't, um, I don't know. But until then, we're just gonna do some quick brown foxes or whatever. Ooh, it's very stiff. I didn't expect that. I don't know why I printed the first word and did cursive for the second, but oh well. Wow, that is very scratchy. Definitely the scratchiest pen I've ever used. <laughs> More scratchy than any kind of extra fine fountain pen or whatever. But um, makes sense, you can't really put tipping material on this or um, can't polish it, so it is what it is. I wonder if I can get some flex out of this. It, it's really stiff, but I'm gonna try. Let's see. Whoa! Oh, that's uh, it's quite the line variation. And this paper is very pulpy, so um, it's not really a good a good test of how the pen is really going to behave. Um, it's possible it wouldn't have spread so so widely if it had been on better paper. So let's try the better paper. Okay, so yeah, this is Rhodia, 80 gram dot grid paper. So decent stuff. So let's see how it does here. We'll do cursive. <laughs> Can you hear that? It's like a squeaky, scratchy sound. <laughs> I 
I don't know if that was my fault or the pens. Um, here, let's just do some line tests. So if I hold it, I think I need to hold it up higher. I think I'm catching some of the underside of the pen. So if I hold it at a higher angle, whew, this is some pretty uh, spine tingling sounds that this is making, but those are some pretty decent lines actually, like really clean lines, as long as you hold it up pretty vertically. Huh. Oof. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, all right, so let's try some thicker lines now. Oh, railroading. Huh, interesting. So it does flex, but I don't get enough ink flow to really take up the space there. Well, I did that time. Maybe I just need to go slower? Maybe that's the problem. So I go fast as that. Go slow. I have no idea. Huh. Interesting. Huh. Okay. I'm saying huh a lot, huh? Oh, so inky. It's kind of a fun ink though. It's like really, really black. Like extremely pitch black. I wish I could put that in a fountain pen. If I did, that fountain pen probably wouldn't survive. Um, <laughs> Cause this is definitely, I don't think that this was really engineered with gentleness in mind. Let's try some different inks. It's gonna take me a minute to get this mess cleaned up cause it's all over me and it's all over that pen. So I need to get it really good and washed clean so I don't contaminate my other inks. Okay, so I got it cleaned out pretty easily actually. Um, and, uh, but before we go back to the Rhodia, I do wanna go back to that, but I like totally forgot this stuff. Y'all should have said something. Okay. So I have here this one, you already saw this. This is Noodler's Polar Blue. It is a very, very wet ink, but wet isn't really the only way to put it. It's, it's weird. It gunks up some of my pens. It's really wet in others. So it's just weird. <laughs> and so, and it tends to kind of like spread out on the page a lot, um, kind of widen your nib size a little bit as you're writing. So um, we'll try that one as kind of a wet example. Uh, Monteverde Copper Noir has that ITF treatment that makes it a little bit wet as well. Um, it's much more controlled, and I really enjoy this ink, but it's still kind of a wetter ink. And here, still in the box, I've got my Lamy Benitoite. And I really like this ink, but it is fairly dry, and it has a tendency to dry out in some pens. So... Um, really pretty ink though. I enjoy using it and it has a, a good amount of permanence to it. Um, all three of these inks actually have some permanence to it. Um, this being in the middle, this being just kind of mildly water resistant, and this one being like a hundred percent water resistant, which is really nice. Okay, let's, uh, let's try Noodlers. Okie dokie. So loud. Sorry for all the crinkling. Okay. Let's see how this goes. Oh, what should I write? Whoa. <laughs> okay. Maybe I need to make sure there's no extra ink in there. Because the stem of the feather is hollow, I kind of assumed that it would be a nice ink reservoir to keep you not having to dip super duper often, but I think if I treat it that way, it's just gonna blot everywhere. Oh my gosh. Okay, let's, uh, <laughs> maybe this is not the right ink. <laughs> I think it's too wet. In fact, just for the sake of concision, let's skip the Copper Noir for now, since that's also kind of on the wet side. Let's go to the dry ink. Let's just give that one a shot real quick. Okay. So here's 
our dry-ish Lamy Bonita White. Oh, how do you hold a feather pen? It's like, I don't want to mess up the feather, but there's not really a good place to hold it elsewhere. Okay, let's see. Barely putting anything down. <laughs> well, maybe we do need to try the Copper Noir. Maybe that's the, the Goldilocks zone. Okay, real quick. It could be the paper too. Um, maybe it would show up more on the road yet. I have no idea. Um, all right, here we go. Whoa! <laughs> okay, okay. Just to make sure that this is a complete, well-rounded experiment, I think I'm actually going to just quickly try to trim this a little bit. If I mess it up, it's not the end of the world because there's plenty of feather to go around and I can just kind of keep trying. But I'm gonna try to, I don't know if you can see this, but these tines, I guess, are not even. This one is longer, so that's really the one doing the writing. Um, and this one's just kind of limping on by the side. So. I'm gonna to try to even that out really quick so that we can give this pen a good honest chance. Okay, that might be four times worse, but we will see. Let's go back to Rhodia. I'm done with that parchment thingy for now. All right, and I still have my Copper Noir open, so we'll just stick with that. All right. Huh, might just be the paper. Or maybe my little trimming bit actually did work. Um, okay, let's try the flexing again. Ooh, okay, we're getting somewhere. Okay, wow, that's actually pretty looking on the page. I'm gonna try just very quickly to just sharpen this a little bit because I feel like maybe I rounded it out too much. It's a little smoother, but it is laying down a much thicker line that makes it harder to really get a lot of line variation. So let's see what that does. And hopefully I'm not gonna get a bunch of feather particles in my ink. Okay, here, let's rinse it off. There we go. Ooh, all right. I mean, definitely not as nice as a metal dip pen, but it's like starting to become maybe usable. Let's try this again just to see if it's the paper or the trimming that I did. Huh, it was me. I did it. Look at that. It's gorgeous. So I am going to attempt to do a writing sample for you of a nice quote. This is a quote I found actually as I was going back through one of my books looking for a quote that I needed for Instagram for a giveaway post uh, to enter a giveaway. Um, and I love it so much, I wanna write it again for you guys so you can see it because it's, it's beautiful. All right, so we'll stick with Copper Noir. I like that one with this for some reason. Okay, so here we go.
Okay, wow, that was that was a really interesting experience. I, I I know that it's kind of messy. I was kind of preoccupied with the pen and and, and stuff, so I kind of got the quote a little weird. Um, had to cross the word out and stuff, but um, but that was actually really interesting. Despite the squeaking and the scratching of the pen, there's something kind of relaxing about it, and maybe it's that I have to go slower and I have to pause to dip. It just feels very methodical and contemplative and nice. I kind of liked how that got me to slow down a little bit. So um, I don't know if I'm going to write a whole lot with this because as you can see, it's fairly inconsistent, but it makes me curious to try uh, tuning it some more, seeing if I can get a feather pen to work more the way one would have traditionally. Um, at least I would hope that back when this was the only kind of pen you could get, I would hope that they'd be more consistent. Um, but uh, it also kind of makes me want to get my actual dip pens out, the, the, my metal plastic handled dip pens, and, um, and give those a shot because even though it's not necessarily as smooth of an experience as a fountain pen, because my dip pens are really cheap, um, it, it still adds something to the experience. Um, it, it just kind of forces you to go slow, which is really fun. Um, okay, let's briefly talk about this quote and then we'll be done. Um, also really quick, uh, going back to how I was preoccupied, I tried to write an S right there and somehow I had to turn it into an H and I've seen people do H's this way. So that's an H. It's not how I usually write H's. Um, but that's how it worked this time. Cause I was just, my, my brain was elsewhere, I guess. Anyway. So it says hope begins in the dark, the stubborn hope that if you just show up and try to do the right thing, the dawn will come. So this is by Anne Lamott and she is a writer. And, um, this comes from her book bird by bird, which is a book about writing. It's a very fun read. If you're a writer, I highly recommend it. She goes into how to write stories and how to just be kind of a creative person in a world that is busy and doesn't always want you to be a creative person. Anyway, so I like this quote. She's talking, I think, specifically about being creative, uh, showing up and trying to do the right thing. She talks a lot about showing up to do your creative work, but obviously this quote is a little more general and has a more general application. I like the idea of hope beginning in the dark. Usually I, when things get a little dark, just feel kind of hopeless, but it's interesting that maybe by definition, hope has to start in a hopeless place. It has to start in a dark place. If you only have hope when hope is easy, then it's not real hope, I guess. So it's interesting to think about and that hope can be a motivator to show up and do what you need to do. And as you do the work, the creative work, the work of just working on your life or family or whatever it is, as you do the work, things do get better typically. So, um, and I thought it was just very eloquent and, and pretty the way that she phrased that. So that is <laughs> my feather pen for you. Hope that was fun, if nothing else. And uh, I'll be back next time with some kind of review or something that hopefully is a little bit more informative than this was. But I hope you enjoyed this and I'll talk to you later. Bye.